Okay, just looking at the questions that you're asking for help with, here's that first one in the diagram. MAN is a tangent to the circle at A. BC is a chord of the circle. We know that these two lines are parallel. So BC is parallel to MAN. D is a point on the circle. You have to copy the diagram into your workbook and prove that AD bisects angle BDC. Um, it looks like you're really going to have to construct some lines here. So I'm just going to go over to my um, paper to prove that AD bisects angle BDC. Now what I'm going to do, you've got a tangent. Um, there are a few rules. Angle between tangent and chord equals angle in alternate segment. Look, I'm thinking of joining some of these lines. I'm thinking of joining AC and joining AB. So let's just have a look here. The angle between the tangent and the chord, well, that would equal this angle here, this angle in the alternate segment, but it would also equal this one here. So you could say that angle um, N... AC equals angle between tangent and chord equals angle ABC, but it's or um, yeah, and you can put angle between tangent and chord um, equals angle in the alternate segment. You can do the same reason for why that angle there that why NAC equals ADC, or you could just say that. Um, Angle ABC equals angle ADC, sorry, ADC equals X. So we should let that first angle equal X. Okay, so let angle NAC equal X. All right. So then these two are both equal to X. Remember, we're trying to show that AD bisects this, so we've really got to show that this is X as well. Um, the reason for that was angles on in the same segment or angles... So they are equal because they're angles in the same segment or, or angles um, standing on the same arc. Okay, angles subtended by the same arc are equal. Um, let's see what else we can do. Also told that MAN is parallel to BC, so we can do alternate angles. So we can say that um, angle NAC is equal to angle ACB equals X. Alternate angles. Um, MAN is parallel to BC. And then we can also do that, therefore, um, angle BDA, this one here, is equal to angle BCA which equals X. This is angles in the same segment as well. And so therefore, therefore we can say that AD bisects angle uh, BDC. And the reason for that is that angle BDA, so angle BDA is equal to angle ADC which is equal to X. Okay, that's that question. Okay, um, this is another question. It was part three of this probability, um, not probability, but um, perms and comms question. Suppose two of the trucks belong to the same company and must use the same entrance. How many different arrangements are there if the other three trucks can use any of the other entrances? Okay, with this question, if you look back at the beginning of the question, there are five entrances and there are five trucks. Now, it says in this part of the question that two of the trucks belong to the same company. Okay, so two of the trucks belong to the same company and must use the same entrance. So those two trucks have five choices. So my, the number of ways, so the number of um, arrangements, if they have to use the same entrance and if the other three trucks can use any of the other entrances. So whatever entrance this, these two trucks go to, these three cannot use that same entrance. So we've got five choices. So number of arrangements is five choices for these two trucks. Okay. Then, um, so let's say one of the entrances is now used. Sorry, I just can't see that properly. So one of the entrances is now used. That means that this, this other truck 
has four choices if one's already used. Um, these three can also go to the same one or different one. So the next truck would also have four choices and the last truck would also have four choices. Now, now the order in which they go in doesn't matter. It just matters which entrance that they're going into. So the number of arrangements will be five times four times four times four, which is 20, 80, I think 320. Okay, so 320 arrangements. This is the next question where P and Q are positive integers um, with P less than or equal to Q. Have to use the binomial theorem to expand 1 plus X to the power of P plus Q and hence write down the term of 1 plus X to the power of P plus Q over Q, X to the Q which is independent of X. Okay. Actually, I think I've just missed that. All right, I've just done the expansion of 1 plus X to the power of P plus Q. First one would be P plus Q, that's like your N, C0 plus, and then you'd have 1 to the highest power, X to the 0, so there are no X terms. Then P plus Q, C1, that's your coefficient. 1 to the whatever, which doesn't matter, but you have X to the power of 1. P plus Q, C2, X to the power of 2 plus. Now, somewhere along the way, P is less than Q, so you'll have P plus Q, C, P, x to the power of p plus, somewhere further along the way, because q is larger than p, you'd have p plus q, c, q, x to the q. Then somewhere further along, or at the very end, you'd have p plus q, c, p plus q, x to the p plus q. I mean, you know, this p, for example, could be 8, and the q could be 10. So, you know, this p plus q, for example, could be 18 or something. If the p is 8, that's going to be lower than the 10 here, okay? So... That's the first part of the question. Now in the next, so we've done the binomial, used the binomial theorem to expand this. Then it says, and hence write down the term of 1 plus x to the power of p plus q over q, x to the q, which is independent of x. So we're just going to have a look at that now. I think I didn't record again. I'll just bring it back. Um, as I was saying, the term of this expression, so if, if all of this expression is divided by x to the power of q, the term that would have no x's or be independent of x would be this one when you divide it by x to the power of q. The x to the power of q's cancel and you'll be left with p plus q c q. Now the next part of the question says, um, given that p, 1 plus p, 1 plus x to the power of p plus q over x to the q equals 1 plus x to the power of p times 1 plus 1 over x to the power of q. Apply the binomial theorem and your result from part 1 to find a simpler expression for all of this. Now this is choose notation here. This just means pc1 times qc1. This means pc2 times qc2. Now this really is, um, we haven't really looked at this yet. Okay, so there won't be something like this in this um, task coming up so don't worry about that bit we still need to do a lesson in class with this sort of stuff okay question I'm going to look at use the substitution u equals 25 minus x squared to evaluate this expression there okay I'll just bring it down here so we've got um, that all right we know that u equals 25 minus x squared so du dx is negative 2x and so let's um, also make further substitutions when x is 3 u is 25 minus 9 which is um, 16 and when x is 4 u will be 25 minus 16 which is 9 so this integral will be um, we've got a 9 there and a 16 there just be careful with that because when you substitute the 4 you get 9, 25 minus 16 is 9. You've got the smaller number up the top and the bigger one down the bottom. Now, um, we know that du is, dx is negative 2x. Now, we're trying to make a substitution for 2x du. So, negative du will equal 2x du. Okay, dx, sorry. So, negative du equals 2x dx. If I just move that up there and take the negative... Um, to the other side, okay, or swap sides once I've done that, 2x dx equals negative du, so I'm going to 
um, do my substitution now. So we've got the 9 and the 16. Sorry, just I need to make this a bit bigger. So one minute. And um, 2x dx is negative du. So I'll go negative du over, um, well, it must be negative 1 du, okay, over the square root of now 25 minus x squared is u. So this is what we're integrating. Um, negative u to the negative a half du. So therefore, when you integrate that, you get, um, I'm going to take that negative out, so you get u to the a half divided by a half, which gives me 2u to the half, substituting in the values of 9 and 16. So I pull that negative out, so I get negative. Now, that's 2u to the half is the square root, so 2, two root 9 minus 2 root 16 which gives me negative 2 times 3 is 6 minus 8. So I get negative negative 2, which is positive 2. Okay. In here, I discussed that in, um, I think I sent an email about this. This is inverse trig functions, so you don't have to do this question there.